Oh, hell yeah, another summer camp book. The three Goosebumps books set at a camp up to this point have all been surprisingly good, and each for completely different reasons. Welcome to Camp Nightmare had the series' most heroic child protagonist and a memorable, if not entirely sensible, conclusion. The horror at Camp Jelly Jam was well-paced and the closest Stein ever got to Lovecraft, and Ghost Camp was genuinely shocking and tense for a kiddie horror book. Let's see if the curse of Camp Cold Lake will continue this pattern. Our protagonist today is Sarah Moss, and she does not care for the outdoors, not one little bit. So when her parents send her and her brother Aaron off to summer camp, she isn't too pleased. Not just any old summer camp, it's Camp Cold Lake, which focuses exclusively on water activities. Swimming, boating, skiing, that kind of stuff. And the thought of having to go into gross, natural lake water makes Sarah's skin crawl. I took one look at the lake here, and I was sick. I knew there had to be horrible things swimming around in the water. Ugly creatures waiting below the surface, thinking to themselves, Sarah Moss, we're waiting for you. Sarah, we're going to rub our slimy bodies on your legs when you swim, and we're going to chew off your toes one by one. Yuck. Why do I have to swim in slime? So yeah, Sarah is going to be one of those Goosebumps protagonists that complains all the time and is a bit of a brat, but I don't know, something feels different this time around. Usually these kind of characters feel like an adult writing out the temper tantrums they see out in the world without any attempt at context or empathy. These kids are brats because kids do brat things sometimes which unfortunately makes them very unfun to read. Sarah is a bit bratty, yes, and at a certain point she crosses the line and we'll get to that, but for once it really feels like we're seeing things from her perspective, and what comes off as selfish, mean-spirited behavior is revealed to be more of a lack of social cues and clumsiness. When Sarah arrives at her bunk, she sees that her bed is right under a window that bugs could get in through and she freaks out, demanding that somebody trade beds with her before she's even introduced herself to the other girls in the cabin, Brianna, Meg, and Jan. Instead of reassuring Sarah or coming to an intelligent conclusion, their camp counselor just shrugs and forces the girls to readjust beds, separating friends Brianna and Meg. Sarah's immediately on a bad foot with these girls, made worse when opening what she thinks is her bag, only to discover that it's Jan's bag revealing her asthma inhaler, a condition she was trying to keep secret from the rest of the camp so she could participate in the more strenuous activities. Sarah just keeps stepping on those rakes. Did you lose weight over the winter? Brianna asked Meg. You look great. Really, Meg? I lost a little, Meg replied. She sighed. But I didn't get any taller. I grew about a foot this year, I chimed in. I'm the tallest girl in my school. Everyone stares at me when I walk through the halls. Boo-hoo, Meg said sarcastically. You really got it tough. Would you rather be a shrimp like me? Well, not really, I replied. Oops, I realized I just said the wrong thing. I saw a flash of hurt in Meg's eyes. Why did I say that, I asked myself. Why do I keep putting my foot in my mouth? Throughout the book, Sarah is failing to recognize social cues, she has trouble paying attention to people talking, she gets really loud at sudden moments. Now, I do not think this is R.L. Stein's intention, but to me, Sarah reads as having some level of neurodivergency. I'm not sure I'm qualified enough to diagnose it as autism or ADHD or something like that, but she's clearly built different in a way that motivates her behavior. She isn't like Evan from Monster Blood, who's just a loud, obnoxious brat for its own sake. Sarah is trying the best she can, and she simply can't do better. To my surprise, I found myself empathizing with her through most of the book, and felt bad for her when the other girls in her cabin started playing mean pranks on her to get even. They scare Sarah into thinking some boys threw fireworks into the fire pit and the whole thing is going to explode. They drop a snake down her shirt. These three girls have been wronged by Sarah, but they don't recognize that these were unintended results because of how Sarah perceives and reacts to things. And so they're all, this means war. And that is such an intense idea on its own. A book about a neurodivergent young girl, isolated at a summer camp, 
out in the wilderness which she cannot cope with, accidentally making enemies with her bunkmates because they don't understand her nature, and being stuck in this situation for weeks. That's a heck of an emotional thriller all by itself. It does break apart a bit when Sarah decides to actively antagonize her bunkmates by scooping up a bunch of spiders and putting them in Brianna and Meg's beds. This is that moment too far I mentioned earlier, the moment when Sarah goes from confused and abrasive to scary pranks, because Stein loves his scary pranks. It's not unsalvageable for my reading of the character, but I totally understand if anyone writes her off as a bog standard goosebumps brat after this point. This escalates to Jan deliberately flipping the canoe she and Sarah are riding in, and Jan blaming Sarah for it. One important thing about Camp Cold Lake is their strict water safety rules, the first and most important being the buddy system. You can't do any activity here without a buddy, meaning Sarah has to keep interacting with these people who hate her. Finally, she gets an idea. A terrible idea that I'm surprised Scholastic let through. Sarah is going to pretend to nearly drown. Oh, then the rest of the girls will feel sorry for her and be nice to her. So Sarah swims out into the lake, holds her breath, and dives deep. Unfortunately, Sarah is so good at fake drowning that she starts real drowning. My chest is ready to explode. My whole body is tingling, burning. My head feels about to pop open. Can't anyone see me here? A wave of dizziness swept over me. I shut my eyes, but the dizziness didn't go away. I pushed out the rest of the air in my lungs. No air, I thought. No air left. My arms and legs ached. My chest burned. With my eyes closed, I saw bright yellow spots, dancing yellow lights. They grew brighter, brighter. They did a fast, furious dance all around me, around my burning, tingling body. And that just keeps going for pages. This book has one of the longest, most detailed descriptions of actually drowning that I've ever read. I don't know if it's accurate, I've never drowned, but it's certainly intense. Eventually, Sarah forces herself to the surface, only to find the world has changed. The occupants of the camp are gone, the cabins are empty, everything is dark and cold. The leaves have fallen off the trees and there's a light snow falling. This world is impossible. This world is death. For real, this is basically the afterlife and Sarah basically died. This is my favorite part of the book. This camp purgatory has major Silent Hill vibes, and this book came out two years before the first Silent Hill game. Sarah wanders around this twisted version of Camp Cold Lake in a panic before stumbling on a mysterious young girl named Della. She had long curls of white blonde hair that flowed down the sides of her face. A pretty face, delicate and pale. So incredibly pale. I've been waiting for you, Sarah. She said. Her voice was a sigh, a whisper. Excuse me? I cried. Waiting? She nodded. Her hair fluttered with every move of her head. I can't leave without you, Sarah. I need a buddy. Then Della starts floating around and Sarah realizes this girl is some kind of ghost. She panics and runs away, only to sputter awake on the shore of the lake, the real living world one of the camp counselors having pulled her from the water and resuscitating her with CPR. So, Sarah, good news! Your plan worked! The girls in your cabin now feel sorry for you and are including you in their circle of friends. Hey, kids, drowning yourself is a great way to make friends! The bad news, Sarah, is that you seem to have brought this ghost girl with you, and Della is going to haunt you for the rest of your stay here. Whoops! The ghostly Della pops in at random times and demands that Sarah be her buddy, as if the rules of the camp have some magical bonding property. Della chases Sarah around the lake, and at one point even takes control of a boat and almost runs the swimming girl over. Of course, no one believes Sarah, and when she asks one of the counselors about if anyone has died at Camp Cold Lake, the counselor insists that no one has ever drowned here. Huh. Very specific wording. Finally, Sarah decides she's just going to run for it. She's going to grab her things and make a short hike through the woods to the nearby town. She ends up thoroughly lost. 
at which point Della shows up. This was all part of her plan, you see. Scare Sarah away from the water and into the woods. Della never drowned. She never claimed to have drowned. Rather, she died getting lost in the woods and receiving a deadly snake bite. And that's what's going to happen to you, Sarah. Della holds out a dangerous snake, ready to kill Sarah for good this time. But then... No! Sarah is not your buddy! A voice rang out. I tried to turn toward the voice, but I couldn't move. I felt the snake tighten its hold on my legs. Brianna! I cried. What are you doing here? She hurried out from behind a clump of tall reeds. With one quick motion, she grabbed the snake in one hand, slid it off my leg, and tossed it into the trees. Brianna raised her eyes up to Della. Sarah can't be your buddy because she's my buddy, Brianna shouted. Della's eyes grew wide. She cried out in surprise. She grabbed the tree branch to keep from falling. You, she exclaimed. What are you doing here? Yes, it's me, Brianna shouted up to her. I'm back, Della. You tried to do the same to me last year. You tried all summer to make me your buddy. You terrified me, didn't you, Della? You didn't think I'd come back, but I did. I came back to camp this summer to protect the next girl. Now this is a fun twist. When Brianna declares she came back to save whoever Della would prey on this year, Sarah feels emboldened and says she'll come back next year to save the next girl. With Sarah now having a buddy, Della has no power here and shrinks back to her underworld. What a fun ending. It really wraps up Sarah's issues with finding friends, a shared trauma bringing two girls together. It's too bad that they completely ruin it right at the end. A Goosebumps book can't have a happy ending, apparently. So it turns out Brianna is actually a ghost herself. That Della succeeded in killing her. And Brianna is going to kill Sarah so that she'll be Brianna's buddy or something. What? At no point was there a hint of Brianna being a ghost. If she was a ghost, why was she walking around and not in the purgatory camp dimension? Why does ghost Brianna need a buddy if she's living her life like nothing happened? Why isn't she Della's buddy? Doesn't this mean Della's plan worked last year? If so, why is Della trying to kill Sarah this year? I figured Della was using this buddy system as a kind of ritual to manifest in some way in the living world, but I guess that isn't the case because it didn't happen with Brianna? I'm assuming Brianna's body was never found and no one noticed she died, so ghost Brianna just went home at the end of camp and attended her normal life for a year? If she didn't and just hung around the camp as an invisible spirit, wouldn't her parents have called a missing persons report? Why is Camp Cold Lake so strict about water safety, but doesn't have anything to say about the numerous venomous snakes in the area? This ending feels like a note. Like R.L. Stein looked at what his ghostwriter of the day had done, nodded, but then said, Yeah, this is alright, but it needs that final twist. She's a ghost. I, I don't care if it makes sense. We can't not have a twist ending. Of the four Goosebumps Summer Camp books, this one comes together the least. It feels sloppier than the other three. But when it's on, it is on. And I would put Curse of Camp Cold Lake in the win column, which, hey, means we're four for four on the Summer Camp books. Sarah is, I think, a quote-unquote bratty Goosebumps protagonist done well. One whose behavior isn't great, but has a depth of character to her that makes her easier to empathize with, and whose behavior motivates the plot in an organic way. Della is a solid and creepy antagonist, the drowning scene was shockingly well written, and the purgatory version of the camp was really atmospheric. The highs in this book are pretty high. It's the connective tissue that's the problem. So this is going to be one of those rewrites where it's more of a gradual adjustment than rebuilding it from the ground up. If this book could be said to have a theme, it's that making positive human connections is actually very hard, even for the most extroverted of people. The camp has its famous buddy system, meaning that if you want to have any fun at all, 
you have to make a friend somehow. And if you're not socially equipped for that, you're going to have a very bad time. Sarah is clearly coming in with a disadvantage in socializing, which means she can't find a buddy. The first change I would make is have Sarah actually want to go to the camp. She loves swimming. She loves the outdoors. If she hates this stuff, then there's nothing stopping her from just pouting in her bunk for six weeks until camp is over. She should really want to participate in the camp activities, but her neurodivergence, which in this version is much more upfront, prevents her from finding a buddy. Her bunkmates read her as being weird and rude. They pick on her, and poor Sarah is shut out of all the fun. Eventually, Sarah goes, screw the buddy system. I'm not going to let it ruin my summer. So she goes swimming alone and drowns. Not an attempted fake drowning to win sympathy. That wouldn't be a good lesson to teach the kitties, but properly gets pulled under and drowns. It plays out like it does in the book, intense drowning seeing the purgatory camp dimension, Della being brought back by CPR. This does not win her over with her bug mates. Things are just as bad as before. The rest of the book plays out largely the same. Maybe Della is a bit more taunty in how Sarah can't make friends, but then Brianna starts to open up to Sarah. Sarah doesn't understand why, but we later learn that Brianna, who dealt with Della last year, can still see the evil ghost. And when she realizes it's haunting Sarah, she goes, oh crap, Sarah's not doing well. Something clicks for Brianna, and she starts to get close to Sarah, starts to try and reach her on a human level. And so when Della draws Sarah into the woods, Brianna steps out. Get away from my buddy, you bitch. And in this version, Brianna is not a ghost because that's baloney. And instead, she and Sarah walk back to camp, a friendship finally blossoming. While Sarah is the protagonist, the point of view character, it's the mean bunkmates that actually need to learn the lesson here. Their failure and empathy in recognizing Sarah's personality. It's a story about understanding people and recognizing our differences. A happy ending would not make this any less spooky of a story. So yeah, a lot of potential behind a few minor changes, but enough with what could have been. As it is, I'd probably rank this book as the weakest of the Summer Camp quadrilogy, but not by much, and I feel like I could change my mind on it with further rereads. Rereads? Oh my god, what am I talking about? I don't intend to touch another Goosebumps book as soon as this project is over. I give The Curse of Camp Cold Lake, a novelty Statue of Liberty cigarette lighter, out of 10. <laughs>